every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And this week we are continuing with the Wizard of Oz uh, pendants, uh, all made out of wire. Last week I had a special request from Sharon to make a scarecrow. So I thought, why not just do the Wizard of Oz? So that's what we're working on today. And I've got my coffee drinking shirt on and my coffee and we are going to get started. So I'm going to flip the screen as always and we'll get started making some Wizard of Oz things. So let's flip the screen. I'm going to pull you up on my computer so I can see who's hopping on. Let me just pull up the video on the computer. I'm going to close up my other tabs. There we go and go to the live section and here we are. Amazing. So Amber's here. Tree Sap Girl, if you guys don't already know, is Amber. She's the moderator of my channel. Hey Amber. And Kristen is here. My sister. Love this shirt. Thank you. W World Peace is my sister Kristen. Hi Leslie. How you doing? Hi, Beverly from Chicago. That's so cool. I watch a show on Netflix called um, Windy City Re Rehab or something, or not Re, Re something or other, where they're renovating houses in the Windy City. So yeah, so these are the sketches. I hope my screen isn't too close. I wanted it close enough so you guys could see. I think I have to... I just have to figure out where's the best position for everything on the screen. This should be good. I'm going to show you guys what we did last week. And we will go from there. So last week I did the Scarecrow. And I did the Tin Man and some shoes. So today I want to attempt the Wizard. And maybe the Lion. And also Dorothy. We might have to do this in three live streams. So here's the, here's the Scarecrow. Ah, Mirta's here. Hi, Mirta. Argentina, yes. And Dulce, hello. And hi, Corey. Nice. So here's the Scarecrow and the Tin Man and the shoes from last week's live stream. And there are pictures in the community section. And I also have these templates in my Etsy DIY shop. And if you buy five or more templates in the shop, you get 25% off with the coupon code SAVE25, all caps. S-A-V-E, and then the numeral two, numeral five. Hi, Levita from Jersey City. I've been to Jersey City. I stayed there when I went to New York City. And uh, Beverly, yes. Did I say hi to Beverly? I've lost track now. Oh, oh, yeah, I said hi to Beverly from Chicago, of course. So now, I want to do this guy. It might take me a hot minute to figure it out. So this is the wizard, and what I thought I'd do is use some beads. So I went into my tickle trunk in my studio and got Allison's beads. So these are Allison's green beads. She had some all categorized. My friend, I inherited her beads, which are full of good karma and good energy. So we're going to possibly use those. I'm going to put them at the side. I'm going to get my favorite pliers. So I have my round pliers, my flat pliers, my flush cutters, and my other thicker round nose pliers. So what I really wanted to do was a cute little chair and then the wizard on top. But honestly, you guys, this one, I'm really not sure how I'm going to start. So I have some more green beads here. I'm going to put those at the side. And I have seed beads too, which are great. There's green in there. So we're going to do that. And the other thing I have are is green wires. So I have green, and I have also this color of green. And then maybe I'll work with some gold as well. So these are the 20 gauges wires. Oh, look, I have another green. Look at I have three greens. That's cool. I like that. So what are we going to do here? That's the question. Dress up reference. Exactly. Mr. Dress up has the tickle trunk. And I my tickle trunk is the one that Allison uh, left for me, which is wonderful. Hi, Sylvia. Costa Rica. I've been to Costa Rica. And CPS8 from 
Colorado. Nice. I've never been to Colorado. Okay, so let's... How are we going to do this? Do we do the little guy? Do we do the chair? I want to do like green sunglasses on him too. So I have to figure out, but I think to get him contrasting with the chair, we might have to do him in gold. So maybe I will do the, I'm thinking to do the chair first. So maybe with this emerald green, we're going to do this. Mr. Dress Up is an iconic Canadian uh, show. And the character Mr. Dress Up was really my role model. My total inspiration for everything I do now is Mr. Dress Up. Um, all the crafts and the inventing and the recycling and all that stuff. That's um, definitely Mr. Dress Up references. That was my favorite show growing up. So let's cut some green wire. And this might be too long, so we're going to see. And how in the world are we going to do this? Because I was thinking to do the sort of the legs like that and then do keep going with the chair but sometimes I do chairs with separate wires but I think this time I'm going to see what I can do to use one wire. I'm going to start with these. Hi Ruby. Uh, for Barbie girl making wire. <laughs> Merlina. Who's Merlina? I don't know Merlina. I'm not sure. But I think I have a feeling I'm going to be doing Wizard of Oz for a few weeks because I don't think we're going to get all this done today. But I'm going to try to make the wizard and the chair. Oh, I also have to make sure I'm on screen with you guys. So let me push this. I'm going to push my camera out a little bit. I think it's too close. Sorry. I'm going to bring it up here a little bit and see if I'm in the right position. I really have to check where my hands are, maybe about here. So now we're gonna come down here, bend that out to start the chair and bring it around. I'm gonna move this out of the way so you guys can really see. And I just wanna really make sure that I'm positioned well under the camera. So I'm gonna get, bringing this one around. And then if I wanna bring this one around here, I'm going to bring that one around here and bring this one around. I think I'm all right now. So we're going to bring this one around here and then bring it out here. So we want to get these somewhat even. They don't have to be absolutely perfect, but we could also use the looping pliers if you want to get these loops the same size. So these are the beetle on looping pliers. And they're very handy for doing loops that are the same size. Or you can use the end of a pen if you like. I love these pliers. And we are going to bring this one around and then do like a little twirly thing. But I want, because I could have just finished them off with a twirl, but because I want to, um, I want to, um, I'm losing my train of thought. I want to um, have it all with one wire. So I'm going to bring this one around. There we go. I'm going to bring this one around. Sorry, my brain's a little fried. I've been uh, doing a lot of traveling around and just trying to focus on this. So there we go. So we've got this. Uh, we're going to do that and bring that one around. So these are just sort of the starting of the spiral. And if you want to keep going with that, you could go like smaller. We could bring this one in to make it a little bit smaller. I could have done them on a cone, how I usually do my spirals, but I'm just working with what I have here. So we're going to bring this one around and just continue it around to make a kind of a spiral. So I don't know how many I want to do. I don't want to use up too much wire either. I'm going to bring that one around. I just want to make them fancy. I think that's the goal here, to make them fancy. So let's just bring them around one more loop around here. And then the, that, see, that makes a little spiral for the bottom of the chair. And then from there, we could just take this and bring it back up. So that's 
that. And let's do the same thing here. And Anil, hello. Scissors, pliers. Oh, yeah, hard to bend the wire with scissors. I mean, I do have a few tutorials on how to make jewelry without tools. Uh, it's a little bit difficult. Some people use tweezers. I don't know if you have access to tweezers, but there are little DIY tools you can make too. So if you search my channel, you can find tutorials on how to make wire and paperclip jewelry without tools. Maybe those can help. But um, yeah, we're very spoiled here to be able to have access to so many different tools. And when I started making jewelry, it wasn't like that. There was, I had to buy tools at the hardware store and they weren't great quality and there weren't a lot of bead like jewelry supply stores couldn't buy the stuff in walmart couldn't there are no dollar stores so i feel your pain it's um it's not always easy to find tools so this is, would be the bottom of the chair like that i think i'm going to keep it simple like the sketch i did these little back legs but i might skip those i'm going to see so this is what we've got so far I'm going to bring this maybe up because I kind of want to make it a little wider now. I don't know. I'm going to bring this one out here because I feel like it's too narrow now. So I'm going to bring this up. Ah, Amber, that the link is that for one of the videos to make things without tools. That's awesome. Thank you. Toolless tutorials, <laughs> one, yeah, so yeah, if you definitely, if you search my channel, there's quite a few, and um, there's one little basic tool that I make is just with a spring, and then you could actually use that spring to bend wire, it's pretty cool, so that might be the one that has that, so this is, these are, I'm just bending this up, but now maybe I should do the handles of the chair, so what if I I'm going to bring this up here. So I'm going to just make that a little larger and bring these ones straight up. And then we want to do these sort of like handles of the chair. So let's do that. I'm going to take this and we're going to really hope this works because otherwise it's wasting a lot of time doing a chair. So we're going to see. So we're going to bring this one around here. And then this one here, I'm really, I should have put my, I should have put my camera a little higher up. I feel like my hands are going off camera a little bit. So let me just lift my camera a little bit because it's going to go wonky for a sec, but I feel like it needs to be a little bit higher so you can see more of my hands. that's going to work. It's a little bit more. Let's see. Let's see if that's going to work. Because I just feel like it's a little bit off. That might be better. So I'm going to have more wiggle room here. And paper clip rings without tools. Thank you. Okay, so now we want to do the same spiral here. So let's bring this one around and do another little spiral that will represent the arms of the armchair around. Okay, um, maybe I'll just make these a little bit more small and bring this one around here. Uh, and as always, you can use the parts of the tutorials that you like, and then the parts that you like less, you can use them less. So this doesn't really look like a chair right now but it might eventually look like a chair. We're going to see. And if we bring this one, these would be the arms of the chair. And this one too. But then we want to do sort of the back of the chair. And then he's going to sit inside. So I'm not sure this is what I want to do here. So actually, let me, okay, I'm going to change this a bit because it's, the design is not what I'm thinking. So let's bring this one down. Okay, we're gonna bring it straight down here. And what I might do, because I have nothing to lose, 
and take this, wind it around, around here a couple of times. And then that's gonna be sort of the chair. And then it's secured in place. So let's do the same thing on this side. We're gonna bring this one down. And if you guys haven't already watched my live streams, um, they're all about this, like just troubleshooting ideas. And sometimes things work and sometimes things don't work. And you guys are welcome to come and go as you like because there are they can be long. And then what happens is after the live stream, uh, Amber, Tree Sap Girl, uh, who uh, moderates the video, the channel, and also does the timestamps, which are hugely helpful because people can uh, watch, go like flip to the part that they like. They don't have to watch the whole uh, video, which is awesome. So you can go to the part you want to learn how to do. And now, rather than do too many lines in this, I'm going to bring this one out because this is going to be the chair. And then this one too, we're going to bring it out. Should be good enough. Yeah. And then we're going to curve this around and this will be the back of the chair. And we're going to bring this one around. But what I was thinking would be cool would be to do, put beads on it. So let's see about that. Let's bring this one around. I guess we could wind beads on it after, or we could put beads on it now. So let's see what we have. I have some pretty cool beads in here. Uh, I'm going to get out some green ones. So we've got these. We've got a bunch of these. I might want to go for more emeraldy ones, though. So we've got a bunch of these cat's eye beads that are cool. These are really cool. And then we have, oh, I found these two little faceted beads. I mean, they're not all the right shade of green, but sometimes when you combine colors, it actually looks really cool. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about all the colors being the same green because it's nice to have alternate, alternating colors and they all, once you intersperse them, they all kind of fit together, even if they're a little off. I tend to be a little more conservative with my bead choice. In fact, on the video I did about making earrings, perfect earring loops, one of the comments was that um, they found my bead choice a little conservative and they were gonna use more eccentric beads and more power to you because it's nice when things are a little more um, out there. Okay, so let's see what we can do with this section here. So if I wanna bead this, I'm gonna start with a little bead to see if it'll hold in place. Hopefully it's not gonna go around the corner. Sometimes beads like uh, went around the corner, so we don't want that. Let's do another, oh, I have other, I have other beads in here. This is my mix of beads I really like. Well, we have to use miracle beads, although, I don't, honestly, actually, let's pretend I'm using miracle beads because I don't want to use up my all my miracle beads because I don't like, I don't want to have to order more right away. So let's just pretend we're mo mo using miracle beads, but we won't actually use them. And I'm just going to use other beads that are here. And I have a bunch of really cool beads in here. Maybe something like this, just to hold the space. So it doesn't go around the corner. So let's, and we could do a little pattern. Let's bring this one in. No, it went around the corner too. So what we're going to do is the cat's eye bead because I know that has a pretty small hole. So let's do that. Uh, can you give us a story time on how you got? Oh, wow. So a lot of you have heard the story, but I don't mind to tell the story. So how I got into wire was, if we go way back, I was a graphic artist in Toronto. So I studied fine art at university and my first job out of university was at a corporate neckwear company. And I used to do graphic art and I designed neckties for a graphic, uh, like a necktie, a corporate neckwear company. They did silk screening and embroidery and things like that. So I did that 
for a year and my boss was horrible. So I decided to move to um, Montreal because the cost of living in Montreal was much less than in Toronto. And so I moved to Montreal and I had already started making hand painted buttons when I was working in Toronto with a friend, with a girlfriend of mine who became a really well-known artist in Germany. She was there working as a nanny for a, a year. We got to be best friends and we started a little side business making hand-painted buttons, but we actually never got to the point where we sold them, we were just making them. So when I went to Toronto, I mean Montreal, she went back to Germany and I brought the buttons and I got a permit to sell on the streets of Montreal. And I didn't speak French, so I had a hard time getting a permit, but I was able to get the permit and um, was selling all over the place, like downtown and old Montreal and, and uh, Prince Arthur, which is a famous um, artisan street in Montreal, uh, no longer sort of functions like that anymore, but it was fun back in the day in the 90s. That was in 1989. And then one day I was working, I was selling in Old Montreal, and I met this guy that was making wire bicycles. His name was Mark, and he was a French guy from Quebec. And uh, he handed me a piece of wire, and I just started like bending it around and made this little penguin. Well, he remembers a penguin. I don't remember that specifically, but he said, I made a penguin. And he was so impressed. He gave me his card, and then I called him, and we went out, and we uh, started going out, and now we've been together for 34 years, and we work together. So he still makes wire bicycles, and I make wire jewelry, and sell it on Etsy, and then I started doing YouTube about 10 years ago, and um, yeah, I've been doing YouTube for 10 years. At first, I was doing all kinds of different jewelry, and then I specialized in and wire, so yeah, I have a lot of experience with wire. That's for sure. It's really cute listening to tell you a story. <laughs> I love that story. In fact, when we sell, we make wedding cake toppers. And when I sell the wedding cake toppers on Etsy, we I send them a little printout of our story, which is really nice. So uh, yeah, you never know what's going to happen in life. And that just, um, Mark actually never used to sell in old Montreal. He just happened to be there one day and, um, and we met and the rest is history. So, uh, and I love making wire. To me, it's like drawing with wire. And um, because I love graphic art, it's really perfect. Yeah, I really, really enjoy it. So now we are getting down here. I think I'm going to keep going until I have start end with the same bead. So we're going to end with the cat's eye bead. This is a fun little pattern. And like you said, they're not all the same green, but they're kind of cool. And how are we going to finish that off? So if we take this and bend it out, then we can maybe attach it here. And I might do something else with the other wire. So we're going to just take this here and bend it around. And then I think I'm gonna to have to finish that end off. Oh, you did graphic art as well, that's so cool. Yeah, I didn't study graphic art, but when I was at university, I um, worked in the student graphic art department for, um, they used to make posters and stuff. So I kind of learned graphic art on the job. I took more fine art at school. So there's our funky looking chair. It's pretty cool actually. But now, how are we going to do the, the guy? And I could have probably put beads across there too. I didn't think about that. And I'm not sure, maybe I'll take, I'm gonna just actually take this and bring this through here. Cause I wanna do the back of the chair, although it might be distracting. I'm gonna do the back of the chair like that. So it looks more like a chair. Let's just do the back here. Bring that here and bring it around. So that looks a little bit more like a chair because it's got that line across the back. And I'm just going to, maybe I would have pulled it, I'm gonna pull it underneath instead. So it just, just pushes up a little bit more. 
around here. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, so why don't you guys tell me in the comments how you got into wire? That would be interesting. If any of you, you don't have to have an, as an elaborate story of that, but let me know what got you interested in wire. I'm very curious because everybody's got their story and, um, and wire art and wire jewelry is so fun. So uh, yeah, let me know how you got into uh, wire or jewelry or whatever uh, sort of uh, arts and crafts thing type things that you do. I'd be really interested. But I know a lot of you do it as a hobby. Some people do it as a profession. So we've got that, we've got to bring that. So now this is our funny looking little chair that it's interesting. Definitely interesting, but how are we going to do the wizard? Now, I know the wizard is, in, in some Im images, it's green because of the Emerald City, but I might do the wizard gold, and then I'm going to put some green sunglasses. So let's do this and see. It's got a hat as well. So do we do a hat? Maybe. Let's get a different green, though to make it slightly contrasting. So I'm gonna use maybe this green. It's a little bit different. Mm, this one's soft. This is para wire. I find para wire softer than artistic wire. I don't love it. I really prefer the artistic wire. This is my favorite wire. But I do use para wire so, only because I won. They have a giveaway on Instagram. So I think I won three spools of wire and I asked them for the green one. So, but as you can see, I haven't really used it much. That was a few years ago. Okay, um, a friend needed help make. this is Amber, a friend needed help making wire cages for crystals and came to me, only thing was I didn't know how, <laughs> oh wow, that's so cool, I love that, amazing, that's a great story, Kathy, watching you hobby along with knitting, polymer clay, deco mesh, and Reese, ooh, lots of different crafts. And Anil says, I love making bracelets today. And I was scrolling through Pinterest. I found your video. I have been trying to make a star ring, but oh, I don't have pliers. Yeah, so maybe those videos will help. I hope so. Discovered wire, Mirta discovered wire art with the hippies in Argentina in the 70s. That's awesome. I love that. Very cool. So how are we going to do this hat? Uh, that's the question. I don't know. I'm just feeling the vibe to wind this around here a little bit, but we're going to see if that's a good idea or not. It might or might not be a good idea. So if we bend this around to make kind of the top of the head type of thing, bring that around here. I don't know how big it would have to be. This might not work. I might backpedal with this. And that happens a lot in these live streams that I end up backpedaling. So we're going to bring this one up. So if we do something like this, and then we want to bend the wire down, I guess, to do the, the head. But I don't know. See this? I don't know if it's going to sit in place or what it's going to do. If we do the maybe the top of the hat up here. I don't even know how big it should be. Um, yeah, this might not work, but that's okay. If we just bring that one around and around. Oh, I don't know if that's necessary. No, maybe not down like that. And then down. Could be a hat type of thing. Uh, maybe. And and then, I, oh, I could also do that thing where I spiral it around a little bit. We can check that. I didn't cut my wire super long. So let's bring that in a bit and maybe do the spiral around thing. Maybe I think I'm going to run out of wire. There we go. Bring that one around. And there, unless I bring it right in like that. I mean, I could also do that. Just spiral it right in until we're out of wire. We're going to see. And if that doesn't work, we're going to try something else. So we're going to bring that one in here. 
that's the fun part about just winging it. You figure it out along the way. And bring this one in. Corey says is making paper beads. Hats on a wire video. That's so cool. I love that. Uh, SPS8. Saw flowers as wire art and was intrigued. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. Yeah, wire flowers are beautiful. So now I'm slightly running out of wires. So let's just finish this end here. And that's good enough. So the idea for this is you just do like a spiral it in and it fills in the area a little bit, which is cool. But now we want this going down, this going up. So how are we going to do the hat as such? We are going to bring that out maybe and across. Maybe can we make a brim of a hat? Kind of making a brim of a hat. But the thing is, I also don't want it to flip around. Okay, I'm just kind of bringing that out so it looks like a funky little brim. But now, can I twist it here so it won't twist up and down? That's my question. Um, that's a little bit. Yeah, like that will somewhat secure it there if I give it a twist. And... I'll bring that one down a bit. Okay, I'm just gonna. Okay. Hopefully that's okay. I had to refresh my screen. Let me see if it's still working. Of course, I have ads now. Sorry if it's buffering. Yeah, it was me. Let's see if it's going. Okay, hopefully this is gonna work. I did press refresh the screen. So let me know I'm back. Okay, yeah, it was buffering, guys. Sorry about that. I, I didn't notice, and then I saw I could go on my iPad and push reconnect. So here, let's do some little ears on this guy, so that way what's going to hold is glasses in place. So I just want to take this, bring it up. It's going to have really big ears, but I think that's all right. And then down. I just want it to look like he has ears, but not make it look too, like, so it won't look too much like an egg head. So I'm gonna bring this one up here, up. Yeah, if it buffers again, I'm gonna watch it and just have to hit refresh, that's all. So now, bring this over. So these are gonna be, Kind of like ears. Yeah, they look like funny little ears. We're going to bring this one down. And I will do... See, that's going to sit on there. He's got a big head, but that's okay. And what I want to do now is... I would like to do a face or something, but now I'm not sure the best thing to do. Because if I brought it, I guess I could bring it up, maybe and do a kind of a smile, maybe. So bring this one out and up. I kind of want this to go to the front, so I'm gonna bend this that way and around. So it's going to be, have a little smile, but I won't do, I think I'm, bother, I'm not gonna bother doing a nose or eyes because I'm going to do glasses, so. I don't even know if he smiles. Does he smile, this guy? I don't know. I haven't seen the Wizard of Oz in a long time, so he's gonna be smiling. There he is. Kinda of looks like a bunny nose, but that's okay. So I just wanted to put a mouth there while I had the wire in that vicinity. And I'm going to take this and wind it around Maybe that could be his neck if we wind it around a few times and bring that one out. Okay, so this is our funny little guy. And let's do him some sunglasses. Sunglasses can be the same color as the hat. So we cut a piece of that. 
Hi, Susan. Nice to see you. Is there any jewelry that took you a lot of time and came out amazing? Well, uh, some things take me a lot of time. Uh, I'm trying to think. I I I'm happy with a lot of the stuff I make on the live stream. But I'm trying to think of a specific thing other than that that I might have been happy with. Um, I don't know. I did a little bit of stained glass and soldering. I made Once I made a stone bracelet with a whole bunch of semi-precious stones and it was all soldered together, that was pretty cool. That was for a friend of mine. And I made a few like that. They were, But they took a long time to make. They were really very labor intensive. So that was a cool project. But other than that, I do a lot of different things. Oops, here goes my wizard on the floor. Okay, so let's make him some funky sunglasses. These are very funky. And I could have made them heart shaped or something. And then we want to wind it around so we have this spiral effect and this I'm just gonna go inside the wire because I want to make it as tight as possible we'll do the same on this side go around here oh it's a beautiful sunny day now it's uh it was gray when I woke up this morning and now it's so Beautiful. So sometimes on Wednesdays, I forget to go outside. So after this, I will go outside and go for a walk. What's the hardest part of doing wire jewelry? Um, the hardest part is when you're trying to make something that looks like a line drawing, how to make it with one continuous um, wire because you can't suspend wire in the middle of nothing so like for example trying to do a face where you have to actually attach the eyes and stuff together that's the hardest part is figuring out the design in a way that it's doable with a continuous wire so i would say that's the hard hardest part about big making wire stuff and because i have 30 years of experience now 34 to be precise um it gets easier, but it, there's still it's definitely still a challenge. But you you come up with hacks and ide like ways to do things. Now I'm trying to close up this space so it doesn't look like there's a hole in the middle. I mean the other thing people have done before is to put nail polish. So say I had green nail polish which I probably do, I could fill in these areas with nail polish and then that would fill in a space. So that's another little hack that you can use resin if you want to fill in areas or um, nail polish. So now that's that. These are funky little glasses. <laughs> Let's see if they're even and then we would put them on oh my goodness these are hilarious so we're going to put these on the wizard here now how do we attach it that's the question oh he's funky so now we're going to take this and we have to bend these straight up uh, because the ears are a little high now and then we can take this and bring it in and take this and bring it in now these Wires, of course, I cut too long. And that's another thing that I tend to do. I cut my wire too long because I can't stand it when you cut it too short. Because it's not always easy to add a wire. So let's add this on here. We're going to bend that to the back. And I'll just clip it and pinch it and hope it's going to stay in place. So let's clip that one. And pinch that one and then this one too we're going to bring it in and then we're going to 
pinch it. And then after this, hopefully we'll have time. Maybe we can make the lion or something. And I think we're going to continue next week and do Dorothy. Because I don't think we're going to have time. And we have to do a puppy, too. So here's the wizard. Oh, I put it on backwards. Oh, no. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so now we have to flip it. Okay. Oopsie doopsie. Okay, let's open that up. And this side. Okay, so put it on backwards. So let's flip it over and bring it over here. There we go. Okay, let's try this. Flip it over and pinch this. Mm -hmm. And there you go. Okay, and then this one. And get that one out. Okay, that should be good. Okay, there. Perfect. So, the mouth is funny. I should have maybe done the mouth a little lower. But that's okay. It's cute. So this is our wizard's head with the hat. And then that would go on here. But how are we going to do the body? I like the idea of doing the necktie. Um, I mean, he should be in green. But I also want to differentiate him with the chair. So I don't know if... Maybe if I do the little seed beads might work. I'm going to see. Let me put a few of these on and see how it looks. Because I think in Emerald City, everything's green. Maybe you can put a big bead in the middle or something. So say we do this type of thing. Um, do I have any big beads? I have this thing. That's cool. That might be an interesting body. Um, also have this which is cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, let me just think for a sec what I want to do. This is really cool, this bead. I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll just do some arms or something. Bring this arm out. The arms would go on the... I guess they would go down and hold on to the to hold on to the chair. He doesn't have to be too big. I'm going to bring it down a little bit here. And, uh, hi Bernice, how are you? If you guys don't know, Itsy Bitsy Imaginarium is Bernice. And Bernice was the winner of Live Wires for the Win Season 2. I have the application forms ready for Season 3 and they're available. I just have to do a promo video and that uh, will be starting Live Wires for the Win in October. So I will put the link to um, apply if you want to become a participant in Live Wires for the Win because you can win great prizes. It's going to be five weeks of wire art competitions. Um, and we're going to start with 10 participants. And the final winner will get... Uh, $200 in beadalon a wire and tools, a collaboration on my YouTube channel, and also $100 gift certificate for my Etsy shop. So, Amber, I don't know if you still have that link for people to apply, but if you guys want to apply, um, the applications are available. So, you can do that. So, here's this little guy. I think I'm just going to do him all gold so he shows up. And I'm going to attach his hands to the chair, if I can. So there's a couple ways I can do that. I could just make like little hooks and hook them in. So maybe I'll do that. I'm going to like bend it here. Just bend it straight up. And then bend it here around the same position. Actually, I should probably me measure it because it might be off there, and then this one off. 
Yeah, so for the live wires for the win, you don't have to have professional experience. Uh, you don't even have to have a lot of wire art or jewelry experience. It's just, we're judging slight, well, a little bit on, you know, quality for sure, but also imagination and coming up with really fun, funky and interesting um, creations based on the themes. I don't believe I can easily access. No worries at all. I will find it and post it in the description of the video. In fact, I bet I could find it right now. Let me have a look. Google Forms. Google Forms. I think that's a Google Form that I did. Ah, here it is. Call for entry. Yep, so let me share it. Where do that? Uh, nope. Um, hmm. That's a good question. How do I share this now? Send. Send. Ah. Send. Link. Shorten link. Copy. Okay. So let me know if this works. Here's. It was. It was really funny. Eh? So let me send it live. Wires for. The win application. Can you let me know if that's the right link? And if that's the right link, I will pin the comment. Actually, I'll pin it now. So if you guys want to apply, that would be amazing. Um, can we find out what the themes will be? Nope. The themes are a, supply, a surprise, so you will find out the themes um, the first week of the competition. So it's very laid back too, guys. You guys can um, just hop, in, hop on and join. I met Sharon because Sharon applied the first year. I'd never met Sharon before, and she just randomly applied and she did quite well. She was in season one and season two. She did very well in season two and, um, and her work was really beautiful and her work has really evolved. So it definitely helped her uh, get on the path of becoming a wire artist. Her work now is amazing. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I recommend anybody apply. It's a great opportunity. It's fun and um, you can win great prizes, so that's awesome. So we're gonna go around, and you guys can see previous episodes. Let me find, let me find the channel. I'll send you a link to the previous episodes, so you can uh, get a get an idea of what it's like. So here's the channel. Uh, copy, and it's. I'm going to apply after the live. Awesome. So live wire for the win and we have let me do this live wires for the win so this is the youtube channel there we go perfect and it's the right link thanks susan so there we go so we're going to do this and we're going to bring this one around and and around and back. So what I'm doing now is making little hooks for the hands so we can hook the hands into here. And then we want to make the feet how, cause see in the picture I used foreshortening and just did the feet like sticking out like that. So that's, that's hard to know how to do that out of wire, right? So I think what I'm going to do is this will go here. This is going to sit here. And I think at the point where the bottom of the chair is, we're just going to bend this out. And this too, we're just going to bend it out here. And we're going to do some feet somehow. How are we gonna do that? Maybe if I, let me just think of how I wanna do this. Bring this down. And then I just wanna do like 
kind of like make it look like the bottom of the feet, but now I'm not sure if that's gonna look right. We're gonna see. So if we just do giant like bottom of the feet, <laughs> it's actually cute. Okay, so let's do that. So we're gonna take this and bring it down and then do the bottom of the feet. See, this is a tricky, this is something tricky to do in wire to make things look, oh, now I bent it the wrong way. So bend it back, okay, and we want it to go out. Oopsies, yeah. Also doing things mirror image is difficult. Okay, so now we've got to bend that down and then around here. So that'll be the bottom of the feet. Yeah, definitely doing things mirror image is tricky. Here and out and up. There, and we're gonna bring this one down. There, those are the, bo the bottom of his feet. Now, question, what are we gonna do now to attach those two wires? That's the tricky part. And we are going to bring this down. And then I guess we can bring this up here. And as always, I'll put better pictures of these in the um, community section so you guys can see how they look and you can see the details. And I'll probably for the template, I'll add a better like sketch of this one because it is definitely tricky and doesn't look exactly like my sketch. So doesn't he cute though? Look, it looks like his feet are forward now. So he would go here, question, how am I going to, maybe I could just attach it here. Say we took, those are funny because maybe I'll use that to do the deck tie. Say, say I take it at the middle between the two legs, we take this, bend it straight, maybe straight out. And then I'm going to take this wire, bring it around, and then I need to attach it. So I'm just gonna take this, help it out with my pliers, and then just give it a little tug. So that's actually going to attach it right there. And then I can, if it's too twisted, the themes are surprises, yes. Yeah, the themes are definitely surprises and nobody knows until each week. And that's what makes it a fun competition because you have to be scrappy and you have um, about four days, you're given the theme and then you have about four to five days to make the item could be jewelry or wire art. And then after the four days, you submit your pictures and then the judges are gonna look at them. And then also people vote on them. That was the fun thing we added last year was viewers can vote for their favorite, which is really, really fun because it's not just the judges giving their opinions and ideas, but the viewers get to not only vote they get to give their feedback. So now if we bring this one up, maybe I'll do some little buttons or something. Um, I could even do some like, maybe I'll put some, maybe I'll just put some beads up here. Let's just see how that's gonna look. Put a few beads, see how it's gonna look. Or remember I was gonna do a big bead? I already forgot about that. So let's just try the big bead and see how that looks. That's kind of cute actually. Ooh, I like that. It actually looks like an emerald. So if we do that, and then what if we made a little necktie or something? Because I like the idea of doing the necktie, but can we do a necktie out of green and add it? Oh, that might be interesting. Let's try that. If I had some 22 gauge green, I would use that, but I don't. So I'm going to have a sip of water. What if I did a little coil? We could coil it around this one just to have something to coil it around. 
around here. One, two, two or three. I don't need it too big, I guess. Because that could be, what I'm thinking is that could go here as a necktie might be interesting. Might flip around, but we're gonna see. So we're gonna bend that up. New design for a necktie out of wire. And bring this one down. Oh, you know what? It's gonna be easier if I hold it with the pliers. Bend that down and up, okay. And let's make it decent size. So if we take this and we're gonna bend it And we can do the same thing where we do the spiral. Let's move that for a sec. I'm gonna take the same thing and bend it down. And then try to do a triangle within there to, I like these tweezer nose pliers because they, you can get in, whoops, into the fine details. So now it's like way hard to get right in there. If I have to separate it a bit, I think that's the issue. When they're too close together, it's really hard to grip the wire. And then in here, maybe I can just get the round pliers. Okay, let's just do that. And then we're gonna clip it. Neckties with chain mail, ooh, that sounds fun. Uh, at the very beginning of my wire career, I had a, a, music, a magician uh, commission me to make wire neckties, and he used to wear them to his shows in Montreal, and I should dig up some pictures of them because they were very elaborate. They had his name written in it, and, um, and they had like stars and hands and all kinds of cool things based on his logo, so... Yeah, the sky is the limit. But I don't know if I've seen chain mail ones, but it, I had a lot of fun making them just out of basic wire. Okay, so now we're just going to... Okay, that's good. We've just done that little spirally thing. I'm going to pinch that. We're going to clip that. Okay. Ah! Perfect. Oh my God, this is the cutest thing. Like it's just as a design, like that would be cool just as an element in some jewelry. But now I realize I have to, they're in the wrong position because this, oh no, is that right? No, these have to be, this is vertical. How did that happen? Well, I have to bend that out. I really don't know how that happened because this is supposed to go to one side and this is supposed to go to the other side. Okay, something something happened along the way and it got bent out of shape. So let's take this, put it back and bring that one down somehow, I guess. We have to stick that wire right in there and maybe I can just grab the end and bring it down to the side. Yeah, that's it got crooked. And then this one, we're gonna grab that and bring it up. Oops, maybe if I hold that. Yeah, not sure how that happened. Maybe I have to twist that going that way. Yeah, that's it, that has to go that way. And then this one too, I don't know why it's doing that. Cause this one should go, actually go down. That's it. It just got weirdly twisted, but that's fine. Okay, that's what we want. Perfect. So now let's take this, put it on the wizard. Oh my God, guys, it's so cute. That's so adorable. So how are we gonna get it to sit in place without um, distorting it? I think if we go around the neck, I'm gonna push that to the back hold it in place and then bring that one around here and bring it to the back again and then we can clip it although we might no we don't need this to attach it I have the hands okay cutest thank you Susan I haven't been in a store for three years and my friend and her husband took me to a new 
pajamas and went to my yay to get new pajamas. Oh, awesome! They had no wire in. Oh no, Susan. Um, message me and uh, maybe I could send you some stuff because I have so much wire. It's insane, and it would be my pleasure to send you some things. And um, too bad I could when I was in Toronto. I should have tried to see you, but as it turns out. Um, we were very, very busy for, uh, we had like nonstop stuff, stayed with my brother and did all kinds of stuff. So here is our little wizard. He's the cutest guys. He's really adorable. I think I want to take a picture before I, super, super cute. I'm going to take a picture before I attach it to the chair and then you guys can see what he looks like. So let's take it. Oh, it's not the brightest out right now. Let's take a little picture. It's so dark. Let me bring it over here. Is that any better? Not really. How about if I stand him up? Hang on. Let me take this. If I do like that and put it, you guys can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just placing him upwards because I'm getting too much shadow. Bring it closer. Bear with me. I just want to be able to sh send a post a picture so you guys can see him not on the not on the chair. That's better, I think. Okay. So I'll I'll edit that photo and post it in the uh, community section. And now let us have a sip of water. Keep it real. Hello, hello. Corey, you're so amazing and brave. <laughs> Thank you. We'll chat, Susan. So I will put this on. Oh, this is so cute. I think I'm going to maybe just leave it at this today because um, this was a lot. Wow. Unless I could do a quick lion. So we're going to attach him to the chair. We're, all I'm doing is hooking his hands onto the chair, okay, to hold him in place. Lisa, where is Lisa? Is Lisa keep it real? Oh my goodness, my brain is fried. So we're gonna push that in, and we are going to push that in, and there he is. Let's. Maybe adjust him a bit so he's centered on the chair. And like I said, I will post a decent picture of this on the community section. Adjust this a bit. I want it to be, this one maybe, I have to bring this one down a bit. Maybe that's the issue. This is too high. So we're just gonna bring it down a little bit and then he'll be more centered. And then this also necktie is a little off so we can maybe fix that bring that one down fix that one let's fix that one a bit and then bend that at a bit more of an angle there i think that's all right he's, he's gonna flip a little bit but that's okay and i can always fix it after so guys there's our wow there's our wizard that was a lot of work um i could maybe fill in those shoes a little bit there maybe i should have put some black beads or something let me just see what i got okay so lisa is keep it real sorry about that i probably knew that last time so here's what if we put those beads are too big and what if we put little black beads in there Let's see how that's going to look I don't know if that, whoa, okay, these are gonna fall off. Let me just put some beads in there and see if it's any better. I should have done, you know what I should have done was that little spiral thing on the feet because that would have filled them in a little more. The black is a little dark, I, I think. So if anything, you guys can, if you're doing something like this, you can always fill in the feet a little bit and it might look, better and let me just cut a little piece because i think it's too late to add it now and da -da. i 
That's me, Lisa. That's awesome. Cool. I have to write that down. Amber will remind me. Okay. So this is too hard to do right now to attach it, but imagine if you just, you know, did like we did before and just filled it, filled the wire in. You know, if you did a couple rows of wire, it would fill it in a little bit. But I think for now that's good. So let's do that and let's do a quickie lion if we have time. And then that'll be it for today. So, Corey says, you've inspired me to try something I have in my head. Ooh, yay. Hi, Lindsay. Let me know if you need any help with that, Corey. I would, uh, it would be my pleasure. If you need a sketch or an idea or feedback. So, We've done the wizard, so let's try a quick lion. I don't know if I cut this long enough, but probably I would start with the face. Let's try it. And maybe I try I won't try to do it too big. And we can, let me just think for a sec. Maybe I'll start at the top. Mm -mm -mm. Let's start around here and next I start with the eyes. I could try that. I'm just thinking, or the mouth. I could also try that. Hmm. Let me just try something. So if we do something like this, because the the lion is I think so, kind of sad looking. So let's just take this, bring it up. Here, I'm gonna move this over so it's awesome, Corey. Just let me know. I'm gonna bring this one up here and up. And from there, we can maybe do a little nose. We can do a round nose or just a little. There, just a little round nose is cute. And then some eyes. So I like that idea of doing the cartoony eyes. So if we take that and I should maybe do this bigger, but we're gonna take this, bring that across. And little round parts for the eyes. Okay, that's kind of cute. Maybe I'll just do it that way. So we're gonna take this, bring it down. Okay. And build the right size. And then bring that one across. Uh, and then do the other eye, circle on the eye. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Just a little face, it's cute. But how are we going to do the rest of the lion? Do we bring it up? Do we go to the side? What if we just brought it over to the side? Let's try that. Okay, I'm gonna bring this one down. And we're gonna bring it across. Okay, so there is what we have so far. circle's a little smaller than the other one, but it's okay. And now, oops, there goes my wire. How are we gonna do this part? Well, maybe we could bring this one up a bit. And then this one we have to do the face, so maybe this one should go down. Let's bring that one down, maybe. Down, and the chin. So down, down, and then the chin. Oh, I'm getting off screen here, sorry. We're gonna go down here. 
yeah, I could definitely do sketches of these because that will give you guys a better idea of the direction of the wire and stuff. So let's bring this one right up. So we've got his face here. And then we want to bring it um, yeah, I don't know if we want that going up. Maybe we'll just go to form the head with this one. So let's bring this one down and then form the ears. So we're going to bring that one up, up, and we can make them maybe pointy up here. And then if you want a sharper bend, we can get the... Thank you. Your chat froze. Hmm, is everybody's chat okay? I know the video froze at one point and I had to refresh it. So here's the one ear down there and we're going to, hmm, looks like a funny looking ear, but that's okay. And we're going to has a little bit of hair at the top, but I might deal with that after with his mane. We're going to bring this one around here and then we'll do this ear. And they look kind of like elf ears, but we're going to figure that out. So we're going to bring that one down and up. And then I'm going to bend that down that way. Should have maybe looked at an actual picture of. Lion ears, these ears are funny. So I'm thinking, I don't think lion ears look like that. I think they're more rounded maybe. Maybe we'll make them less pokey. I'm gonna actually turn that because I find them a little pokey, a little pointy. Yeah, I don't think lion ears look like that. But maybe if I add a mane, it's gonna look a little better. We're gonna see. So I think for now, we are going to, let me look for a picture of a lion. Um, let's see. So now I'm going to look for, so I was responding to a text from my friend who was gonna come for a walk, but she's not coming. So now let me look up lion image. Yeah, see they have little ears. Yeah, they're more rounded ears. Yeah, those ears are not good. So can I fix that? That's the question. Let us see, fold them over, that's a good idea. Do you think that's gonna, it's gonna show? I just hope these don't break, so let's just do this for now. This might be a hot mess, but we're gonna see. Okay, let's just flatten this out a little bit and see what happens. I do have my wire smoother, but I think I'm going to look at lion head. I'm gonna look up the lion head. Head. Search. Yeah, I think they're really more rounded, those ears. Yeah, I'm gonna make them a little cuter. So let's take this. I don't know why I drew them like that. That was weird. Okay. So can we just make them more round? Yeah, that's definitely cuter when they're rounder. I just hope that my wire doesn't break. Okay. I did not want it to look like an elf. So we've got that. And then we're gonna bring that one around. It's a little crinkly, but I'm gonna add the mane. So I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal. There we go. Aw, so much cuter. Okay, so now we are going to take that down and around. Okay, let's see how that looks. 
I also don't want the wire to break, so I'm trying to slightly go with the bends I already have. And that might work. Anyways, this is a sample, so it's not really a huge deal if it's crinkly. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit more. And that should be good. So we've got the ears. Bring that out here. There. Now. Yeah, not as pointy as a cat. So one might be a little bigger than the other, but that's all right. Okay, so now, I don't think I've ever seen a lion up close. So I'm just basing this on images. Okay. Oh, it's cute. Now, how are we gonna do the mane? Um, not 100% sure. And maybe, can we do it? We could do it right away. Let's just bring that over. And, um, mm hmm because I guess I could add the mane after, or maybe just do like a little curvy thing. I've done lions before, but not in this stance. So if we take that and, because I kind of wanted to do him sitting. So what I would want to do is bring that one up. And then looks like he's got like these kind of arm things going on in the picture. Let's bring that one down and then across. And then bring that down for the hand. And maybe I'll bring this one. Okay, so this one should have maybe gone. Yeah, I should have brought that eye thing up a little. So we're gonna bring that one up here. And then start doing a kind of a main thing here. I'm not exactly sure how, but we're going to try this. So down, back, down, back, down. Okay. And we can do the arms here, I guess. Might run out of wire, but. So we're gonna bring this one across and down to represent the hand and, or the paw. Bring that one down and then up. Uh, I wonder if we could do like little funny little finger things. Could try it. Cause I was thinking I could do it like a spring or maybe we can just do little paw-like things. We're going to see. This might or might not work. We're going to bring this and just make some little paw things. And this one too. They're going to be more kind of cartoony than anything. It's looking more and more like a cowardly lion. Yes. Yes. Cowardly. Exactly. That's the idea to make him look like he's cowering. So there we go. And I like the idea of putting the uh, tear too, but there's only so much detail you can put. So now we're going to take that that way and then bend it up. So that's one paw. And then we're going to bend it up and bring this one around. So that's the arm, leg whatever you call the front things of a lion that they stand on, but they probably also use it, use them for other things. So technically they're legs, but in this picture, they look like arms. And then same here, we can do some little finger things. Stay consistent. So we're gonna bring this one down. And as always, you guys can do your own interpretations. The other thing I was thinking to was to do like a spring thing for the, for the paws, which would be fine too. 
but for now I'm just going to do them the same. And maybe another time I'll try them, the, that spring method, because I know when I've done monkeys, sometimes I do the hands like little springs, like coils, I guess you call them. But for this one, I just decided to do this way. Now, so now if you have to bring these closer together, just get your flat pliers and bend them in. In there, okay. And how are we going to do this? I'm gonna bend this one down a bit. Okay, so this is the arms. I'm not sure if the shape is perfect, but it's all right. Okay, it's a little wonky. It's all right. No problem. Okay, so now, yeah, I don't know what happened here. I did a funny little, funny little curve. There we go. There. Now we're going to take this and then we want to make this sort of knee thing. So let's just bend it back on itself and... Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, so we're going to bring this one down and then we need to make a kind of a knee thing. So I'm going to just bend this up at an angle, sort of up at an angle here to form a knee, curve it, curve it, there, and then bend it back on itself to make the knee, oh, hopefully that's not too far in, and we'll get the round pliers and bring it around to form a kind of a knee thing. There, perfect. So there's like a knee and we're gonna bring it, maybe even make it like a little bigger, to like kind of more curve there. And we're gonna bring it out to form the foot. So we can bend it. I think the feet have to be quite big. We're gonna see. So we're gonna bring that over and around. And that can be a kind of a foot thing. And I think I'll keep the foot simple. Oh, I don't know if that's good or not. We're gonna see. And now we can bend this across. So that's a kind of a, whoa, that's a big foot. Maybe that's too big. Okay, let's bring that in a little bit more. Okay, and maybe it doesn't have to be, maybe it doesn't have to be actually pointy like that. Let's just curve it out a bit more. That's cuter. Okay, so let's do another foot. And maybe here, I guess. Maybe I'm gonna do here and then around. So we can do the other leg here, similar. And then bend this to the front. There. And curve this around. Around. There. And we can, so cute, thank you. And then we're gonna bend that at an angle here. And we'll do the other legs, maybe slightly sticking down a little bit. Okay. And we'll get the round pliers, bring that one around. So he's got two legs. Like I'm even amazed I was able to pull this off at all. So I think it's looking all right. And so there's the legs, but he looks really wide there. So now we're going to see what we can do about that. We're going to bring this up 
and around, and then we're gonna figure out where the tail has to be. So this can go over here a little bit more. This has to go down at a more of an angle because it's a little bit wide. So we can fix that, bring that one in. And we're gonna figure out exactly where we want it to be. And I think I'm gonna work on more lion designs, although this one is cute. I like his face. And the mane has turned out pretty good considering it's all with the same piece of wire. This arm, maybe I bent it up too much. Bend it at an angle a bit. Might have bent it up a little too much there because it goes right under his arm, which I wasn't necessarily intending, but I'm not quite sure. Maybe I could roll that out a little bit. I'm going to try to roll it out a little more so it's not so much in there. Maybe that would make the might make the mane a little bit wider. Let's go to try that a little bit more. Because sometimes you can like roll the wire out a little more to adjust the position of it without breaking it or forming a weird kink. So that's not too bad. Yeah, some of the angles and the proportions might be off, but at least the design is not too bad. But now we want to figure this out. Yeah, this was definitely a little bit on the long side, but it should be all right. And so now what we want to do is figure out where the tail is going to go. So I'm thinking probably about here and and then we can bring this one down, okay? So are we going to connect these in the same place? It's not too bad. And maybe we can maybe just bend that out a little bit and down just to give it a little bit of position there, just to give it a little bit of differentiation. And from there, we can hold this place, curve it out, okay, curve it out together, and make sure you're holding them in together, and then I'm going to curve it down here, maybe curve it up a bit more, up and down. We can make a nice long tail. And then I'm going to actually hold this here to hold them in place and bring that around. You could bring it right around and then clip it. Clip that there. And then we want to make sure it's in the right position. That looks good. You could give it a little bit more of a pinch. And from there, we want to make a nice tail so we can, let me just see which way we're going to have to bend it around. Um, yeah, so we're going to bend it that way and we're going to bend it down and then we can make a nice swoopy tail here. Although, you know, we don't want it too big either, I guess. And down and then I'm going to bend it back on itself here and swoop it around a little bit more. Okay, we're going to bring it around a little bit more. Like out, out and in. Okay. Here. Perfect. So that makes a kind of a end of tail shape. And then we want to wind it around so it's going to hook into that so it won't um, come undone. So we just bring this around, hook it around that bit so it won't slide. And then we're going to clip it. Didn't have that much extra. And then we're going to pinch it. 
and that way it'll stay in place here and you can adjust this so it's a good position. You could bend that down a bit if you want it more pointing down and we can hold these together and do all our little adjustments that you need and just finish this off and yeah the arms may be a little bit short but we're gonna see if we can adjust the position a little bit so if we hold this what do we want to do if we hold this and maybe bend it down a bit bring that down a little bit yeah you can do any little adjustments that you need we can even adjust this if we need bring this one around bring that up and bring that one in yeah there's all kinds of little adjustments that you can do to make things line up properly so now I've moved the hand in front of the leg a little bit and this one it's pretty good and i'll put a i'll put a, a photo in the community section so you guys can see them the shape of this one i'm not 100 percent sure but it's pretty good there we go so there we are so we did the lion and the wizard we did a lot today guys he's fantastic yay Night Lion King, there you go. I haven't finished this one though, so I will definitely, next week, we'll do Dorothy and maybe a castle and we'll see, maybe a couple more things and then, um, and then that'll be it for Wizard of Oz. So one more week of Wizard of Oz and we're good to go and I'll put a picture in the community section and I'm going to flip the screen and say goodbye and thank you guys so much. So let me do that. Here we go. So yeah, thank you guys so much for hopping on the live stream. Uh, more Wizard of Oz next week. I will put pictures of these in the community section. Thank you so much to Amber for always moderating the chat adding the links, doing the timestamps, no rush for timestamps. We usually, you know, get them up within um, a few days, um, give or take. And what else? Ah, be sure to apply for Live Wires for the win. I'll put the link in the description of the video as well. I will do a call for entry video in the next couple of days. And uh, like I said, don't worry about your wire art and jewelry experience. It's open to people of all levels. It's gonna be fun. And uh, Corey, you're gonna get in touch with me about a design and Susan, I'm gonna DM you about wire. And if there's anything else, you can always email me at info at Heather Boyd Wire. Actually, it's better the Heather Boyd Wire at gmail.com. I think that's um, a better address to get in touch with me and I wish you guys a wonderful day wonderful night and we'll see you the next time bye